Few games in the role-playing game genre can boast the pedigree and lineage of the Final Fantasy series. Tracing its roots all the way back to 1987, the series has endured in the hearts and fans of critics alike. But for the longest time, there was no convenient and consistent way for players to enjoy all of the earlier titles, with the various ports and re-releases of these formative games being scattered across multiple systems. Luckily, this has now been remedied by the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. Revealed during Square Enix's E3 2021 showcase, these versions were advertised as updated and modern, yet also faithful recreations of the first six titles in the Final Fantasy series built from the ground up in the Unity engine. New and improved, they were touted as the definitive versions, with quality of life and graphical updates bringing them into the 21st century when it came to modern gaming expectations. Keeping in line with this, Square Enix also decided to delist the previously available Steam, Android and iOS versions of these games, while also labelling the newer versions of Final Fantasy 3 and 4 as 3D remakes to avoid confusion. Starting with Final Fantasy 1, 2 and 3, the Pixel remasters were released on Steam, Android and iOS in July 2021. The remaining three titles then followed with a staggered release schedule. Unfortunately, at the time, there were no official plans revealed relating to expanding the release of the Pixel remasters beyond Steam and mobile platforms. Square Enix instead stated that home console ports would depend on demand. Based on estimated Steam sales, the Pixel remasters have ended up selling just shy of 400,000 units combined, with over a third of these sales coming from the original Final Fantasy. This has generated an estimated $3 million after removing Steam's cut. And with mobile sales and reviews not being all that strong, it meant home console owners started to become resigned to their fate. However, right in time for the franchise's 35th anniversary, Square Enix announced that it would be bringing the Pixel Remaster versions to PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. But not just this, they would also feature a whole host of changes compared to the original Pixel Remasters, and these even newer versions would aim to further refine the definitive experiences. So, for longtime fans and the uninitiated, we thought we'd take the time to examine everything that's changed with the Pixel Remasters, and this will be from the perspective of how these versions differ from the original games in a general sense, how the console releases will update them even further, and we'll also spend some time diving into prominent tweaks that have been made on a game-by-game -game basis. So with that, let's dive right into everything that's changed with the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. Now, the word remaster can mean so many different things these days. But with the Pixel remasters, the clue was in the name, as Square Enix has placed a large amount of focus on improving the visual presentation. The main objective has been to retain the original art where possible, updating it for modern displays. And to ensure this has been done to the highest possible standard, Kazuko Shibuya was assigned as lead Pixel artist. This was an incredible move, as Shibuya was one of the original staff members responsible for creating those pixel assets on the original games. And part of the challenge has been to adapt the designs for modern displays, as the original designs were created for CRT monitors which can blur, inflate and stretch pixels. As modern displays don't do that, almost every asset has been created from the ground up so that things appear as players remember them and not as how they actually would look when blown up on modern displays. Taking things a step further, this means that a larger range of colours has also been used, with many of the models having more fidelity. And to ensure there's consistency, while not losing that nostalgic feel, the decision was taken to have no clear distinction between the 8-bit and 16-bit games. They are all now using the same visual style, irrespective of the original system they released on. For sound, a very different approach was taken. Instead of recreating the pieces using similar sound fonts, but without the same hardware restrictions applied, the decision was taken to do a complete overhaul. And this mantra has also been applied to sound effects as opposed to just the soundtrack in isolation. By adopting themes of following tradition and proper evolution, this means that even though the musical pieces have the exact same structure and can even be overlaid on top of each other, the decision was taken to remove all technical limitations. It means that for the Pixel remasters, a whole new suite of orchestral arrangements have been produced, and although Noboru Uematsu did not make an active contribution in this regard, he did still supervise the process. From a gameplay perspective, 
the Pixel remasters also represented an opportunity to fine-tune some of the mechanical quirks of past releases. First off, the difficulty of every game has been rebalanced. This was necessary due to numerous quality of life changes, but where possible, the developers have tried to ensure this balancing does not distort the experience. One prominent example is characters now automatically targeting the next enemy instead of simply wasting their turn if the target was downed. They welcome change for Final Fantasy 1 through 3. But beyond that, auto battle has also been added. Using this option will allow players to fight through the rank and file random encounters much faster, and this is a game changer for marathon grinding sessions. Another, smaller quality of life adjustment relates to traversing the world map, as it's been made possible for players to move their character diagonally, making transit times between locations much smoother, and it's also now possible to run in towns and dungeons, a feature many past re-releases and ports have also had. From a UI perspective, one of the more noticeable features was a standardised font that would be seen across all six games. While criticised as sterile and unappealing by some, this choice did at least help to tie all the games together aesthetically, and this would work alongside the wider graphical and audio changes. The other thing worth mentioning in this regard is that because these games were not simply ports, but new versions all of their own, Square Enix took the active decision to base the Pixel Remaster versions on the original Famicom, Super Famicom, Nintendo, and Super Nintendo releases. One of the downsides to this is that most of the added content from the PlayStation Portable, Game Boy Advance, and PlayStation versions have been removed. Having said that, the Pixel Remasters do still feature some modes that have become standard, such as the Bestiary and Sound Player. It should also be noted that the plots of these games have not been reworked, as Square Enix carefully pointed out on their website. However, localizations have been updated in line with some of the more modern ports, and all of these titles now feature the European language options found in the Game Boy Advance versions, as well as Korean, Portuguese, Russian, and simplified and traditional Chinese. That then brings us onto the supplemental changes that will be added to the home console versions of the Pixel remasters. Listening to the reception of these Steam and mobile releases, Square Enix decided to change the font. The new font now matches the overall design of the games much better, and this is a welcome feature that will undoubtedly help these versions nail that nostalgic feel that Square Enix has really been aiming for. Along these same lines, the console versions of the Pixel Remasters also have a new feature that's sure to please audiophiles and retro enthusiasts in the fandom, the ability to switch between the newly arranged soundtracks and the original soundtracks. Outside of these changes, Square Enix has also added even more quality of life changes that would allow players to adjust the experience of each game to their liking. It means there will not only be options that would allow for the adjustment of how much experience, gill and ability points that can be earned per battle, but you can also determine whether or not you even want to have random encounters. This feature has been appearing more and more as of late, and even Square Enix's own Bravely series features it prominently. Its arrival can only be seen as a huge plus for busy players or games on the go as they will be able to maximise the effectiveness of their play sessions and focus on the narrative when they wish, or for the more hardcore, it will let them tailor their own bespoke low challenge runs more easily. With these new broader changes, it's clear that Square Enix took the fan and critical reception of the Steam and mobile versions to heart. As a result, these updated versions of the Pixel Remaster series seem poised to land even closer to their goal of being the definitive versions of these timeless games, meant for players of all skill levels and abilities. That being said, each of the six titles contained in this series is also its own unique experience, and as such, outside of these broader changes, there are also plenty of game-specific changes that go beyond the aesthetics and bonus features already listed. Starting with the original Final Fantasy, the first change is a visual one. It features completely redone enemy sprite work that uses the original 16-bit versions as a base. Some overworld sprites have also been touched up, such as Princess Sarah, while boss overworld sprites seem to have been lifted from the Dawn of Souls version on the Game Boy Advance. When it comes to the localization, the script uses a combination of the Dawn of Souls and the Anniversary Edition scripts, along with some altogether new content to help smooth things out. When coupled with the wide variety of languages available, this easily makes it the most accessible version of the game ever released. Gameplay-wise, the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster features elements from across its many releases and re-releases. When it comes to character stats, the level cap is set at 99, just like it was in Dawn of Souls but the game has reverted back to the charge system for magic spells found in the original as opposed to using MP. 
Beyond this, the accuracy and evasion stats are expressed as a percentage instead of a value, and the intelligence stat now has an effect on both spell damage and how much health is restored by spells. Enemy encounter tables have also been adjusted, removing the peninsula at power through patching out the tile overlap bug that caused it in the first place. Additionally, the game's AI scripts have been adjusted for numerous enemies and bosses, making things a bit more chaotic as enemies randomise the use of their attacks and abilities. The sleep status also no longer causes a guaranteed turn of sleep, petrifying party members now gain experience from battle and the morale system is not used, meaning enemies have a set chance of fleeing combat, making the fear spell essentially useless. There are also some new items featured in the Dawn of Souls version, and spell pricing in shops reflects the prices found in the easy mode of the Final Fantasy Origins port. The Final Fantasy 2 Pixel Remaster also features completely redone enemy sprite work that uses the original Famicom versions as a base. But beyond this, additional animations for spells have also been added. There have also been numerous changes to the gameplay to bring Final Fantasy 2 more in line with the other Pixel Remasters. For example, rows now function as they do in the other games, with characters in the back row taking half damage and the player being able to switch the position of their characters mid-battle. Auto-targeting also now applies to dual-wielding weapons, meaning the second attack in a set won't miss if the original enemy was defeated. There have also been numerous balances and fixes applied. Enemies have seen tweaks across the board, and they too will no longer have a set script for their abilities and attacks. Beyond this, support spells now function as intended, and enemies have less chance of being affected by the teleport spell. Stat growth is also now based on the Dawn of Souls version, and as of the version 1.0.4 patch, status effects on enemies' physical attacks no longer have a 100% success rate, so say goodbye to those devilish curl softlocks. Now, as the Pixel Remaster series is the first time that Final Fantasy III has appeared in a 2D form outside of its original Famicom release, compared to the other two 8-bit releases, there are quite a few changes between the two versions. Outside of the new sprites and animations, this means there have been quite a few enhancements applied to gameplay. It means bugs related to equipment and spells from the Famicom version have been fixed, and equipment, in general, has received a major overhaul and rebalancing adding new stats and effects to items found in the original game. Additional options for sorting the inventory have also now been added for convenience. Many enemies have also been rebalanced, including bosses, and encounter rates have been adjusted. Many bosses also now feature attacks and abilities seen within the 3D remake version of Final Fantasy III. The biggest changes though have to relate to the job system. Before, when the player wanted to switch jobs, they needed to spend capacity points to do so, in addition to there being an adjustment period for the new role. This is no longer an issue, as the player is now able to freely switch between jobs as they see fit. Many jobs have also been reworked to combine abilities, add new ones, or adjust available spell lists, such as the Black Belt and Ninjas, now featuring the iconic Kick and Throw respectively. Finally, some dummied content, like the Sea Dragon enemy, has been restored, and locations that the player was not able to revisit in the original version of the game are now revisitable. Healing spots have also been added in the World of Darkness, making Final Fantasy III's Marathon of a Final Dungeon a little bit more bearable. Final Fantasy IV, as one of the most re-released Final Fantasy games in history, features changes from the original that take into account the many ways the game has been reinterpreted by Square Enix over the years. In this regard, even though the Super Famicom version is a strong base, it's an amalgamation of sorts, a sort of aggregate version of the beloved game. Featuring sprite work based on Final Fantasy IV Advance, this version relates a lot to the visual effects seen within the complete collection, minus the 3D effects. It also features updated character portraits inspired by the original Super Famicom version, although these no longer appear in character dialogue boxes like they did in some prior re-releases. The script here is largely based on Final Fantasy IV Advance as well, with some additions and polish paid to dialogue along with some all new text. From a gameplay perspective, the Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remaster draws from the numerous 2D re-releases as well as the 3D remake. To start, this means there have been many things rebalanced, with items, equipment, enemies and signature character abilities all being touched up. Numerous bugs and glitches found across the many 2D versions of the game have also been fixed, like the Infinite Guild exploit and the Mist skip. 
items that can be used to cast magic now no longer require that the item is equipped to the person casting it, although it must be an item that they can actually equip in order to use it. Item inventory has also been expanded to be limitless, which is convenient considering equipment from departing party members is now automatically removed and placed there. Now it does go without saying that the robust augment system introduced within the 3D remake is not available, but one other noteworthy enhancement is a bit more subtle. It's that Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remaster now has an ATB bar, something that was absent from the original 16-bit release. The Final Fantasy V Pixel Remaster also serves as an amalgamation of sorts, combining Final Fantasy V Advance with the now discontinued older Steam and mobile versions. Perhaps the area where this is most noticeable is with the graphics, as there are updated sprites, new animations and key NPC overworld sprites have been added to more closely align with Yoshitaka Amano's artwork. This version also addresses numerous bugs and glitches, especially with regards to the battle scene. For example, weapons can no longer inflict status effects if they miss, and level 2 old no longer bypasses old immunity. Balances to several enemies, spells and status effects have also been applied. In earlier versions of Final Fantasy V, the ATB system would charge based on a character's agility stat at the start of a battle, but for the Pixel Remasters this has been changed so that the bars fill randomly, albeit still at different speeds based on agility. Like with Final Fantasy III, several jobs have also been rebalanced, and there have even been multiple changes in how certain jobs function in the Pixel Remaster compared to the Steam and mobile versions. For example, the Berserker now attacks foes randomly. The Thief's sprint ability now works in towns and dungeons, stacking with the default sprint included in the game. The Geomancer's Gaia ability is now based on both the terrain and the user's level, and equipped weapons can boost the power of a monk's kick command. As the most ambitious game from the 8-bit and 16-bit era, it's fitting that the Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster features some of the most dramatic changes compared to its original incarnation. First off, this version features many of the same types of upgrades seen in the other games, coming mainly in the form of bug fixes and gameplay rebalances. However, there have also been a load of extra quality life additions. These include healing pots near key save points and a new battle results screen which alerts players to any items dropped or skills learned. The cursed shield has also been addressed, with it no longer requiring battles to reward magic AP to count towards its cleansing. The player simply needs to complete the battle, even if the player wielding the cursed shield was downed. Another big change is that Sabin's Blitz command, which required the player to input commands, has been altered to accept cardinal directional inputs in lieu of diagonals when applicable. To make things easier for all players, a guide now also appears at the top of the screen when using Blitz, and the player now has unlimited attempts to enter in a correct command until they hit the confirmation button to execute the attack. Now the biggest change to the game, in terms of presentation at least, also happens to be one of the most iconic scenes in the game, the opera scene. Rather than recreate the scene exactly as it was in the original release, Square Enix instead opted to use the HD 2D engine found in the Octopath series to add a new dimension to the set piece. The vocal performances during the opera are also now fully vocalised, making this scene the largest departure in the Pixel remasters from that original mission statement. And with that, I think we've just about covered all of the major changes. There are of course many, many more, but we hope this has given you a flavour. Either way, knowing how much has been changed and how it has been changed, will you be picking up the console versions of the Pixel remasters? And as a wider question, which versions do you now deem the definitive versions? Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Alright everyone, with that, this is Daryl signing out. As always, I'd like to give a big thank you to all of our Patreon and YouTube membership supporters, especially Benjamin Snow, The Livestream, Elsa Claire Farron, Gaussian Dikajata, Gregory, Justin Dent, and Zukan TDK, who are super special Onionite supporters, and of course, a big thank you to everyone for watching this video. I'll see you all again soon for more Final Fantasy goodness.